Star Trek 57, M23, take two. Star Trek Podcast. Thank you for sharing the news. We could have told them together. Why did you want me to do it? In times of crisis, people need to know that their leaders are not rattled by uncertainty or overwhelming odds. They need to know that there is a plan that they'll be okay. You're their president. You can give them confidence. A sense of security. You're my president too. I'm grateful. We had the chance to connect before we approached Species 10C. If we can't communicate with each other, what chance do we have with them? You'll know when you had too much, too many chocolate bars. <laughs> like full bars? <laughs> I mean, just, it, it doesn't make a difference. Just eat. That's like a pound of feathers, pound of marbles. It's all a pound. <laughs> yeah, okay, can we, <laughs> enough with the t- too much chocolate talk. Let's, uh, let's talk about too Star much, Trek. <laughs> too much chocolate talk. Let's, man. let's talk about uh star trek discovery uh season four episode 10 the title of the episode is the galactic barrier no it's just galactic barrier i think it's the galactic barrier <laughs> I'm just, oh, sorry that was probably a horrible mic sound uh, look it up made. look at i'm up. almost i'll bet you i saw it I'll as bet the you, galactic barrier i will i will i will look at I memory will, alpha i will give you 10 look at md thousand i will give you ten thousand quadlus I don't even know. 10,000 bushels of it, it was called, quadrature it was called the, the one with the galactic barrier. I believe it was called the galactic barrier with the article the. His- Trekmovie.com says, review, Star Trek Discovery faces the frontier in quote unquote the galactic barrier, but, mem- but, but, <laughs> but Memory Alpha has its uh, the web page title just galactic barrier no that's the galactic barrier as in the generic galactic barrier they've never talked in, about that yes they have on the where no man has gone before which we talked about in episode one of this podcast i'm not joking that one Lee. doesn't that one doesn't that doesn't count no of course that counts why does that count uh, because they go to the galactic barrier but i'm saying memory alpha has a section on the galactic barrier and on quote the galactic Fine. barrier. It may or may not be the galactic barrier. Uh, okay. Okay. Just because you know, I could be an asshole and be like, I don't know, I don't believe you, I don't believe it. But I'm looking for <laughs> yes, the. Yes, I suppose you could. I, I'm looking to find the truth. That's the problem. Is so many people are that's too. Not, that's not the problem. That's good. I'm, I support you on that. Right. So many people say they're people of, of, people? of science. Yet they're not people, looking people for the, the truth. Street. People they, on the street. People people say I'm people say I'm science. a person of science and I say, Oh yeah, do you care about the truth, yo? And they're okay, like okay, and okay. then and then they say, No, I care about being right and having my world okay. structured but around do you care about the truth. World structured okay. around a way that I understand. That's so, what so I Dan, care about. Like so that's Dan. not the fucking truth, so man. Dan, so, it's not reality. So Dan, what what started off as a as a mild apology <laughs> For perhaps getting something incorrect has turned into some sort of self-aggrandizing <laughs> moment associating yourself with just the the the, the 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 philosophy of science. Yeah. Well. Okay. Welcome to the It's Got Star Trek podcast. Welcome. We already talked about Thank what we're you. talking about. We're welcome. talking about Star Trek Discovery. You know that already because it's in the title on the podcast. It's the titular player. show. It's the yes. Uh, no, it's not the titular show. It's, it's the titular show no. of Star Trek. No, it's not. There's a lot of different Star well, th- Trek. This is, but the one, it's the titular show of our episode of Star Trek. He just wants to say titular. Right. There was that Kids in the Hall sketch where that guy kept saying titular, wasn't it? He was like, I was, I was a titular. There was that Dan Aykroyd sketch where he kept saying uh, uh, Titian instead of Titian when he was talking about, you know, <laughs> there's that old Saturday Night Live sketch where he's talking about art, talking about this. He's like, check out this art. Because it was some 
because Titian drew painted a number of nude women. I don't remember that one. I Look remember- it up. Go to YouTube. Uh, type in Dan Aykroyd Titian. <clears throat> Sounds like Titian. Do you remember when that when that when that Belushi character Rather base humor when that Belushi character's chop- Berl- <laughs> Berlushi chop- Ber- that- Ber- Berlushi you said something <laughs> weird. <laughs> He said it weird by accident. Oh, it's a yes, real life okay. version of the internet. Yes. Um, that Bor- Borlushi guy, when he had that sword and was all like, ah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, that was the uh, the samurai. He was the samurai sketch. Yeah. Like a, did he have a deli or something? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really get that sketch. Really. He was always it's a some kind of baby of a, boomer humor. Yeah. A proprietor. Of, or he baby boomer. Different humor. Stores. Anyway, it was Star Trek. Star Trek. Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek. I'll look up the Discovery. Dan Aykroyd sketch, though. Yeah, look up Dan Aykroyd. We'll do a T-tian. we'll do a podcast on it. T i t i a n, Titian. Titian. <laughs> the joke is yeah. Anyway, uh, all right. Star Trek Discovery. Another great episode. <laughs> Let's get you, you again. This is the second week in a row. I've been thrown off. I've been thrown off the uh, standard list of podcasting uh, maneuvers. So manoeuvre, yeah. manoeuvres. Is that how Manoeuvres. it's pronounced? Manoeuvre, right. manoeuvres. Okay. All right. I'll start. <laughs> All right. Let's I'll start. Start, Let's start it. And I will make a comment. And then we'll go round robin and we'll each make comments. It'll be like the McLaughlin group. <laughs> All right. Okay. Podcasting. That. Guys, we've been doing this a real fucking long time. I think we've. 100, we've this is the 117th. It was the 117th. The 11th. We're beyond the 11th. Uh, beyond 11th <laughs> <laughs> the comment I'll make is that unlike last week's episode, the which. What? The comment. He said that funny. The, co- the, the comment. Commandale. The comment I shall make. Oh, I thought you were like the commandale. I was like, it was like that's a fancy ass word, man. I apologize. It sounded like he was speaking a different language. I yeah. do apologize. It I've, sounded really fancy. Two witnesses here. I don't think we need to replay the tapes. Two witnesses here are attesting to two the fact witnesses. that I perhaps spoke too quickly. I Play jumbled my fi- words a little bit. Play back to film. What I'm saying is, my comment on this episode is that. Whereas last week I found a fairly predictable plot line, this week I found less predictable. I know that's not much of a comment. It took a while yeah, to get there. But... I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> but that was that's in my notes as a comment to make, and so I'm putting that I'm putting it on the line out there. Now, round robin. You mean because they were going to the to the unknown, so you didn't really know what was going to happen. Yeah, were you talking about the which plot were you talking about? Just in general, both plots. This whole episode. The whole I, episode. I, I enjoyed it in part because while of course I you you know the broad strokes, probably they get through the galactic barrier. Probably, and we do know. Like, okay, we do know the the generals of Tarka's backstory that he's sort of said stuff along the way, but this kind of fills it out. That too. I mean, we right. still we still kind of know. We didn't really learn much. We just kind of got some. Him and Oros got pretty close, huh? Stuff, yeah. They got pretty close. I don't know. Did they? Looked like they got pretty close. They were certainly very friendly. They were doing equations all snuggled up together. Uh, I was, some I, snuggle equations. I mean, yeah. I, I, snuggle read that, equations. I read that as romantic. Because, I read that as romantic. Because as well. it seemed like a romantic and adorable I mean, why thing not? to do. Why not? Uh, yeah. Make some hollow equations do you think together. Is, is, is Tarka an alien or is he a He's a, a rising, rising. Does that count shine. as human? It's it's a no t- no they're rising we're all they got we're a tattoo all, on their forehead we're all humans do you, here. Do you think what, we're humanoid what species is or, a, which or, is a prejudiced term it <laughs> is yeah well we're all humans humanoid here. what does that guy orzo oros or- 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 orzo <laughs> that's a rice shaped pasta <laughs> yeah oros oros what oros. we don't know what they they don't they we don't know that's no type of established species that we know of right. Or was... You know, I don't believe so. So, feel... looking at a Klingon's forehead, you can tell that that's some pretty hard bone. Like, it probably, if they headbutted you, you'd be, be fucked up. Oh, yeah, they got ridges. You, you bet those, I bet that's a protective shell on their head. They could probably take a good shot to the head and be okay. And I, I'm bringing this up because I was thinking about Oros's head. He had some weird, like, ridges, hanging down ridges. Yeah. That you could, like, pick him up by if you wanted to. <laughs> like, you, probably, could, like, yeah. you could, like, grab it and peel his skull off. <laughs> Hang him on the wall. Top of his Jesus scalp. Fucking and that's how you get, open it up and, like, you get out like a, a, shrimp, out. a shrimp fork and you start <laughs> oh, eating. Oh, a shrimp fork. She eating away. <laughs> You're a fucked up person. An it's, 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 it's horrifying. <laughs> but it's horrifying because it's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because it's true. Exactly. That's why that's it's getting a, to me. That's, what, it's, that's a delicacy. Yeah, they call that a delicacy. Del- a, a, maybe a, maybe it's gillish. Maybe he's gillish. 
Gillish, that's the name of his species? No. I mean, maybe he's, it's, he has Some a Gillish He's got gills. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so when they speak with a British accent. So, he's, a he's, pseudo, so he tastes like fish. British accent. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell if he was a, is it a fish guy or a what a what thing or... But do you think those? You, <laughs> what the? <laughs> but yeah, it's a perfect, perfect peel and scalp. Um, oh, he's got he's got a perfect peel and scalp. Yeah, but do you think those hangy ridges? Do you think those are hard like a Klingon's forehead, or do you think they're kind of cartilagey like ears? It looked cartilage, kind of like yeah. ears. Yeah, yeah. I think so. We seemed like it would make more sense because it seemed like it'd be really fragile. Could otherwise. be a little wiggly. Because Klingons are, even though they're ridges, do you know those fuckers are? Although if you got your head caught in some shit on you're falling down as a Klingon, that'd fuck you up. But um, I, I think Klingons do damage to shit that they hit. <laughs> that's the that's how they get by. Is they just do damage to it. And weirdly, Klingons were name checked again in this episode. Oh, I, did, yeah. I, I missed that. Uh, it was early the on. Translators. It was, early it was on. a Kovic moment. Yeah. So we get to see. Oh, some, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Get to see some cool Kovic stuff here. What was the deal with that Doctor Harai? We've not. We never saw him again. Are we to assume he's going to come into play in a later episode? He must because he if they okay, they introduced him. The actor who plays him is probably a familiar face because he was on. He played roles on X Files on that uh, on the Battlestar Galactica sequel Caprica. Uh, I think he was on an episode of Sliders. He, played, he was on the Forty Four Hundred. He was on Millennium. He played roles he was in the Highlander he, show. He played roles on those. He's I, been on every like science fiction TV. I show. thought he played biscuits on on certain things. Oh my god, biscuits! <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> it's, it's fucked up, and I laughed at that. Uh, <laughs> You're so mad. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, roles in, in the genre biscuits, area. Biscuit roles because he's talking about playing roles in, in the Canadian film oh, genre. <laughs> sci-fi uh, arena uh this uh, gentleman uh, 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 his name is uh, hiro kanagawa uh, hiro kanagawa yeah, yeah. uh he's all over the place he's a great actor so okay they hired a great actor presumably he's going to be sticking around uh they also gave him a charming entrance sort of acting a little bit unusual compared to what we might be used to in the context of Starfleet right that that, that mother and that motherfucker was talking down to kovic who has the balls to do that man? and they gave him this quirk yeah. where every time you see him in the episode, he's eating. He's snacking the entire time. He's snacking in the first scene, and there's a couple other times you see him What's just in the eating? background, and he's just like fucking oh, got a handful I, of like nuts or whatever, chips. and he's just nibbling on them. Yeah, that's funny. Cause the is... I, it's funny because I didn't even notice him until after that first scene. He was he was hanging around. Yeah, he, yeah. He he's on, on the, the ship. ship, so there's a couple time, other times you see him, and he's, he's going always, to first contact. And he's nibbling on shit yeah. the whole time. So like they've given him a quirky. He's like the Brad Pitt. Yes, like Brad Pitt, exactly. Ocean's Twelve or whatever. Or yeah, Ocean's where he's always 11. eating, and and they they've applied a, a quirky characteristic to him, a quirky character trait, quirky character quality. Yes, trait. I'll go. The quintessential with. quirky quality is running through rabid. I don't know. Round it, rummage. it might not be quintessential. I'm sure there's others that are even better. But this my mistake. <laughs> but <laughs> but. He'll be he'll be around. We didn't see much of him in this episode. I guess they just needed to let us know here here's this new character yeah. Ooh, and he's this? on the ship with them. How many more episodes are there? Uh Two? I think 3. 3. I think they have 13 episodes this season. 13. There's a bit of a controversy about this. Oh no, again, another controversy. Well, some people Star say there's Trek 12 episodes. Other people say there's 13 episodes. Is it a two-parter? And the problem yeah. is is that the people saying these different numbers in my book have somewhat equal authority. Mm. Uh, so ugh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. you were saying, I was saying that I, say, I, I say. was going to say something <laughs> and what I was going to say, say it, sir. is as follows. <laughs> now I've totally psyched myself. It had to do with, Oh yeah. Star Trek. We're talking about Star Trek. We're talking <laughs> about how we saw shots of him wandering around the ship and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It reminded me for whatever reason that engineering is, I've noticed looks a little sparse. In terms of people, there's Stamets, maybe one or two people in the background. Sometimes Reno's there, sometimes Sometimes not. not. Like, yeah, right. Sometimes Adira. I don't know if they have to. I know because of COVID. So I guess it, at this point, is like, what do you attribute to COVID and what's not a COVID? Because if you look at yeah. TNG. They never really had much on Discovery. Like, you had Tilly. Yeah. yeah in TNG, in the in engineering, like, whether or not you saw a lot of people, it always had this feeling like it was bustling about. Yeah, like, it was something that existed. Yeah. You could talk about it, like, down in engineering. Well, you didn't even have to yeah. see it. Because like, it, back in the 80s, you could pay extras with cocaine. It was legal. And uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> It was a lot easier. <laughs> they had a special dispensation in, in uh, California. Oh, that's how. That's why they're so bustling. 
That's, that's why, that's why <laughs> there's there's people are bustling back and forth. getting it done. The more you bustle, the more cocaine you get. It's like, I'll wear a skirt. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, what was it? A, sh- a, sh- a skort? A sh- a sh- a sh- a squirt? Squ- a squirt? A squirt? A squirt? Oh, the, uh, no, it wasn't a squirt. A squirt? Uh, Squirtle? No. Uh, I squirtle. can't remember. Uh, you, a man pants? A squirt? It was what? Scant. It scant. Was, a scant. It was a scant. A scant. scant. It was a scant. Because they, they, they like say that in, uh, in Lower Decks. So Skirts yeah. and pants. Yeah. Scant. All right. Mm-hmm. So this whole episode thing. So anyway, so there was, there was. I'm sorry. So it was weird. I don't know if that's because of COVID or what, but it, the engineering seemed a little bit sparse. Maybe it's also because it's so dimly lit. It's how everything's kind of bathed in blue or something. There's, there's not a lot is of. Is that blue? Is that what color I'm seeing? The focus. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> not, not a particularly controversial. Are those the tones discovery I'm picking up? Is on, is on Stamets, and Stamets is basically all that's going on in, in engineering, and sometimes reno's there to like come up with some crazy stuff but like maybe in the future you can control because of, because of the mycelial network it's it's pretty much all stamets that's that's true i mean, I mean you would think of course that there would be more people on and the maybe, staff but they're just the focus in the future is, maybe you don't need as much you don't need of course they got, you don't all, need they got robots they got all them dots and yeah. shit they got the zora and, and taking you, you, care you of have stuff zora like come on Captain Kirk in the 23rd what century more do you need? he stole an entire starship with just a few other folks so in the, he was a rascal. Maybe because remember when Smart Barkley was all bitching about um, how the interface was too slow. You mean Smart Star- Barkley? Do you mean in Star Trek TNG's The Nth Degree? Yeah, that one. Patrick. Smart Barkley. Smart Barkley. Smart <laughs> Barkley. Smart Barkley. But so he was all bitching about like complaining <laughs> and moaning and stuff about you know how the interface is too slow. This interface is too slow. I don't like it. Sounds just like Barkley. Yep. And so in the future, you notice that they have like future. First of all, all everything's programmable, even the fucking matter. Even, even anti matter. Even fucking anti matter. Is even programmable. It sounds like a bad idea, but maybe it's a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> well, but it stands to reason. Stands to reason for sure. Um, it stands to reason. But so maybe their interface, because it's all holographic and digital, and if you can see my hands, you could tell I'm in VR right now. Yeah, man. Um, and be, maybe that's what Barkley was talking hands. about. Bar- although this is like you have to use your hands, so it is like a baby's toy. Unlike <laughs> you mean Back to the Future Two style? Yeah, with Elijah Wood. Yes, and Malone he, Gunman. Oh, that was and, Elijah. But, yeah, and so and, and so your, 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 so ba- the, your, your references are out of this world. You're yeah. all over the place, Glob. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start. We're gonna start figuring. We're getting there. We're getting, we're there. getting there. there. I don't want to. So, I don't want to impede your creative process, but uh, I'm getting a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so Barkley, you, you keep waving your hands about <laughs> talking about. Talking so about Barkley. I'm saying, why they don't need as many people in engineering in the future. Because they improved their They improved the interface. Now, it's not as good as Smart Barkley's interface because Smart Barkley's interface, Smart Barkley's interface was- was um, Elon Musk style, straight, was like to straight, straight, straight to the brain. Straight I'm to the brain, straight to the dome. I'm just saying they've never needed that Elon many Musk people style. on Discovery and engineering. Yeah, yeah, why? Because of the Cause, cause future- Because of the inter- Because of the interface. Yeah. Because the interface is all holographic. Or do you think before they went to the future- Oh, even, even back in the uh, 23rd century. 23rd? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Saying, does Elon Musk have a brain interface? He's working on it. Oh, of course he is. Says he's working on it. Just like Zuckerberg's working on it. Says a lot on a, 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 a space verse or something. Zuckerberg. Hey, at least Elon Musk has rockets that yeah, work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like those other people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's we'll okay? Fucked up billionaires. Story concluded. Back to Star Trek. Back to Star Trek. It's time to be cool. Discovery. So, 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 Saru. Saru is naughty in this episode. Saru is oh. naughty. He like naughty things. He like naughty sex. Wait, and he like naughty. What? What? He like <laughs> naughty galactic barriers. But he still had time to like sound like he was lecturing everybody else. <laughs> he, he was. He always well, sounds like he's lecturing. Yeah, easy for him to say. Kaminar is all good. There's no threat to Kaminar. I, I, I don't give a shit. He a little bit had that. I know it wasn't <laughs> yeah. intentional, but there was a little bit of the attitude. It was like. I'm so sorry to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, right. Can you, can you can we gotta you know? There's only this, uh, there's only Kelpians so much. Kelpians are still doing all right. So, yeah. but the brilliant Doug Jones has so a number, a number of great lines in this episode. But I want to know if you both and if the audience shares my opinion, subjective as as though it may be, of what the best Saru line this episode was, because there are a few candidates. Okay, so. The most memorable one that I 
wouldn't necessarily argue is the best one was in like the um Beavis and Butthead in space scene where um <laughs> where yeah. Lieutenant Chris where Lieutenant Christopher was all like what, what did he say? Like he says it's cool or something and he's like yes things are yeah, cool. No, that's, that's when he sounds like he's, he's giving a lecture to someone. He says frontiers are always cool, Mr. Reese. Yeah, he's like Yeah, so right, that I like. That's right, the so, one I so, think is yeah, the best line. Right. So yeah. So that's what it was. Christopher says, um, so that's the edge of the galaxy. And then Reese is like, is it wrong that I think that's pretty damn cool? This was like the, to me, that was like a Beavis and Butthead yeah. space kind of yeah. scene. Yeah. Um, for better, or for worse. And then, yes, yeah, Saru going, Frontiers are always cool, Mr. Reese, sounding like really square and yeah. like out of touch. Like, he was, was holding his livery. Like that was his, so good. He was like yeah. holding his livery. He had his hand on his livery. He needs to get kicked in the chitin, I think. Kicked in the chitin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick that guy in the chitin. What the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty violent, Jesse. What do you think? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pretty uh, violent on this episode, aren't we? He was grabbing at what would be the, where the human liver would be. I wonder on a Kelpian where their version of a liver, if they were to have one, gives would be. A shit? <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> this is, this is, so, okay. Jesse's really bitter about Saru this I've episode. Just, I've, noticed, I've noticed that <laughs> Jesse has, has been displaying somewhat of a, an anti-Kelpian bias over the last You know what? I think you're weeks. right. No. Didn't you say, because <laughs> I, think, I think last week or the week before, Dan had asked, uh, what would happen if if uh, Kaminar was destroyed? <laughs> Jesse said, <laughs> "No one would give a shit." <laughs> I think I remember that. Yeah, I think I did too. That was that's not cool, man. Any, I mean, but anyway, there there <laughs> something about Saru. He's just kind of off putting. I I yeah. I, no, I like Saru. He's no. A I like him. I like him. But there's like it's he, all he just has own. he has some quirks. You know, he's a he's a quirky own. guy. He grows a lot of plants and stuff. He's and... always grateful someone shared. He did it again. Remember, he went uh, Owosakun. Was it Owosakun who um was talking about how she was? She's like, I'm sorry, I I disobeyed orders or whatever. I just I wanted to help. It's reminded me back home of all this shit that's going on. And meanwhile, the ship's all falling apart around him. He's like, Thanks for sharing. You know, that's why I thought I took it. But maybe he actually meant it because in this one, when Colbert, by the way, Colbert is like keeps fit man <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, dude. that dude keeps fit yes. so um yes but um he's like 50 or something and he's good for him fit. good for him um no we could, no, I don't we could so. take take him as inspiration and we could uh we could work out. Work out. <laughs> we could work but, out. But work. um when but Together, Col- podcast but Colbert was all um trying to put Saru at ease about like his relationship troubles and things like that. And then Saru ended the conversation again with I'm grateful you shared and it would make be sense like he would actually it's like where with Wosakun it seemed like he was like kind of like saying thanks for sharing no I disagreed this, with you at the time yeah you did you did <laughs> but now there's more evidence that you now there's more evidence against my case now because when he's when he thanked Colber for his time that was legitimate so I was like yeah, oh that's just yeah. how he talks to people you know it was it was cute to see Saru uh... he didn't want to be made to, he he didn't want he didn't want to be made to feel foolish. <laughs> I love that when people are like, I was made to feel foolish. Yeah. <laughs> they go, no. I think that's another great line of his. Yeah, it's honestly. like, what, just once? <laughs> and, and again, uh, owing to particularly to the delivery by Doug Jones. Uh, but yeah, it's just his whole interaction with uh, Tarina, the almost uh, middle school esque style of being forced into revealing his feelings uh, in, in, in a situation where. He's simul. This is really a fourteen-year-old boy sort of thing to do. Mm, yeah, where you have a situation where maybe you're moving or something, and or and so you tell the person that you <laughs> that you yeah. love is there's nothing to lose now, so you can tell them. Yeah, right. But you also are moving, so you don't really have to deal with any repercussions. But then the gag being that yeah. oh, it turns out your dad got a new job oh, right at the there. factory, oh, so you're man. not moving no more. Yep. And now you have to continue going to school with this person that you professed your love to. Uh, that was a really sweet scenario. I'm not 100% sure <laughs> whether it kind of, I mean, I guess it works with Saru. It's a little weird because they're making him seem somewhat immature. It's in like this a, area. It's a teenage situation. It yeah. is. I, I'm well, how fine long, with it. It just seems a little bit. How long? Do Kelpians did Kelpians live before they were able to get past? So that's good, what I'm not clear about. A, a, yeah. What excellent point! Exactly, they didn't. They How didn't live Saru? that long. I think there is an in context justification for this behavior. 
Cause, it's cause, not yeah, like out yeah. of the blue. And it's like Kelpians don't have much precedent for how to deal with feelings yeah. at that age, you know? So it's like hard to even, you're going to, for, for even knowing everything you need to know, people still will feel. Kelpians do, but Saru doesn't so, because he's an old style Kelpian. He's an old, yeah, he's an old style yes. Kelpian. So, Good point. So another good point. We're fucking collecting good points left and right here. <laughs> that's you guys, you that's are why I'm here. You you are illuminating my mind, and I'm making adjustments as new evidence Gubit. has arrived into my Gubit. algorithms. I'm the, um, so, I'm the light in the darkness. So in a <laughs> in a situation like that, Dan is science, and you are a light. I am the light. Je- Jesse is the light in the dark. The light. <laughs> All right, Dan. Sorry, I was just saying. Yes. Yes, you were saying. That in a situation like that he's in, a situation Saru. where where he, as he put it, he says, "Ah, oh, I cannot envision any situation more awkward than this." This is okay, it was kind of sounded like a sad, pathetic flox or something, but <laughs> but no, it was it was charming. But um, even in his situation, even if you know all the precedent, and you know all the rules, you know what's normal, not normal. People are still gonna it's still gonna be an awkward situation because of your emotions. So he has that plus his his collective cultural history doesn't have a lot on that subject to begin with so it's really hard for him to like figure out where his north star is okay (laughs) so his north star he is fully justified in this behavior fully justified i have my the the weirdness i feel in it is somewhat reduced uh, and I'll try to incorporate this into my it th- is, no, thinking it is, algorithm but as it we is, move along. No, but I, I do agree with you, though, because it, it does seem out of character and a little bit strange, which I guess is part of the point, but... but. It's, it does, does bring it, up something else. How does it how does it compare to like when Picard would be made to look foolish by uh, women or children? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, mostly children. I don't know what it's you're like talking every about other, with, every with other episode. Women. <laughs> like whenever he has a crush on a woman. Which oh, is okay, all right. Let's, please list out all the times that Picard there was, had a crush on a woman. There was that, was made, all made, made to there was that, that one who, who had his, his whore gone. And then there was the one who he went to the to you go mean Vash, and the one he went to go Indiana Jones with out and then get some secret crystals. Well, that was Vash. They were both Vash. Okay, so it was, was Vash. Vash. There was that other lady that was the uh, the like lady, astronomer. And, and, the astronomer, and, the yeah. astrometrics and there's a person yeah. Lox, Loxana makes makes him feel foolish. It's just a situation of this dignified captain, and it's, he's like, well, but yeah, he doesn't know, he doesn't that, understand the, the, the how to navigate that, the minefield of love. The captain, but that's funny that. to see that. I I, I would. That's I, a gag, as I, you would say. Yes, but I would characterize it differently. I wouldn't characterize Picard's failure to handle uh, Loxana Troy as being. Imma- uh, immature uh, due to immaturity due to immature due to i would i would have a uh, <laughs> it's more associated with he doesn't know how to square his uh cultural uh values as- around politeness and instead you know not causing any ruckus right he doesn't know how to square that with dealing with this uh, uh wonderfully brilliant vibrant woman that is locks on a troy <laughs> <laughs> She's um, like the keeper of the rings or something. Yeah, the, the and the and the ancient chalice of reeks. Yeah, uh, the, it sounds like some serious business. I, I believe it is, and I think uh, now, uh, presumably, she passed on, and and uh, Deanna. Inherited, oh, she inherited, inherited that. Those Jinx, roles. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so you were so. Um, what I was saying was is that so I I think it's a slightly different thing. I get what you're saying. We're talking about Saru acting out of character, basically. I I, I I'm agreeing that Saru is justified in this behavior. There's in universe contextual. Or contextual, however you like to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Justification. <laughs> what? What? Con- contextual or contextual? Okay. All right. Okay. All Sounded right. Sounded like you said something else. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't, man. <laughs> like when you got a gun and you're going hunting, hunt. <laughs> That's what we, or maybe punt when you like got a football and you punt. It's punt. Oh, I thought you meant like punting on the Thames where you got the stick and you stick play, it down at the who, bottom of the. He plays of, of the, of all the, the, all the, ta- the ta- bally bally wadget, wadget, the bally wadget. That's not a thing, Dan. Put a put a put a t- 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 put a Thames in the bally wadget. <laughs> <laughs> making up stuff. You're making up like You're a fanciful Britain. Offending our UK. We fanciful. have a fairly large audience in the UK. It's a fanciful You're Britain. offending them. <laughs> One more thing. Uh, because, okay, fine. Uh, Saru, immature, that's fine. It makes sense. <laughs> but I do want to know, and we'll take a break. Uh, I'll ask the question, then we'll take a break and come back and discuss it. I want to know what you think uh, Tarina thinks of this behavior. Mm. Legitimately, what does she think? All right. You think on that. We'll be right back in a moment. 
Okay, we're back. What do you think Tarina I thinks mean, I of do, Saru's behavior? Do you after, think she's kind of like, well, this is cute? Or is she like, I like this guy, but he's getting a little creepy and weird. I, I took a nice long walk around the block. So I've thought about it a lot because we were supposed to think about this for yeah, a while. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I'm feeling cheeky or something. It must be this peach, peachy keen monster drink. That'll make um, it cheeky. Monster. So, monster. right. It is an awkward situation, but at that point, as Saru, you just got to own it because if you act all weird about it, the other person is going to think you're sort of like emotionally, you know. Well, and you're giving advice, and I think it's good advice. But I am i don't know. I'm not sure exactly how we're supposed to interpret uh, Tarina's reaction. Clearly, she's into Saru. I think we're supposed to understand that she finds him like really sweet and wonderful, and I would too. I find him sweet and. wonderful. Do you wonderful. think it's going to end with her just see it being like we should keep it up, keep it friends? Vulcans are already kind of peculiar anyway. Yeah, compared to what we would think of, you know, human style relationships. And so you're just that's, well, that's part you're, of your your question is basically how did what did her reaction regardless of uh, how did you interpret, interpret her, how did you interpret her the re- performance yeah. she gave in the. Yeah. I mean, but because yeah, because I was I was wondering a little bit if she did seem a little like, eh, but like I wasn't sure what they were trying to tell us with that. Was she was she feeling awkward because at that exact moment it was when she's realizing that she's going to have to go right, through the barrier. Right, so maybe she felt awkward too. So she was a little distracted. Or she's that. like the more well adjusted one, and then he's a little weird. But jumping off your point, Jesse, the uh, we don't see a lot of Vulcan romance especially cross species vulcan romance we do see it in the history of star trek what about trip tucker the third you know, yeah, it, yeah trip tucker and, and uh, paul and we see stuff with uh, uh, amanda whatever yeah amanda hug and kiss mm. and <laughs> <laughs> ex wife and Vul- and when spock goes uh to vulcan for the whole pond far business it's not we're not devoid of examples but we haven't seen a lot of over multiple episodes, uh, the slow building and developing of a romantic relationship, a little bit with Paul. It's not that slow of a build. I mean, this was introduced what, like two episodes ago? No, since last no. season. No, they la- <laughs> last season they were already at the end of last season. Wait, by a- last season do you mean part one of this season? No, I mean season three. Of t- what you're talking about, Saru and there was a there was... Trina. Right. This, th- this has been a slow buildup. Yeah. Um, well, so it seemed like she was a little bit like off put by how how Saru was starting to give the signs of maybe early st- early stage clinginess or something, yeah. without him meaning to. It's just maybe those are like early signs because he's being. So he doesn't know how to and deal. Which, and which I can't imagine to... was the intention. Is what that's what I'm getting no, at. Right. Well, but... so no, but so what I but what I was going to say is that it ended with her wanting to have food with him and telling him that he was comforting to her. So I yeah. think just from that alone, we can just assume. You that think she's, she's going to eat cool. breadsticks with a fork and knife? <laughs> Only if they're like those hard, you know, crispy breadsticks. Super crispy. So yeah. the thing is, is Star the Trek crispiest you can replicate. Star Trek often has had issues developing relationships they've had some success here and there and less success in other times i'm i'm not sure i'm digging i'm really digging this budding relationship i think it's appropriate and wonderful it's really sweet i think the actors are doing a great job Mm -hmm. with it but I, I I don't know if it's just because it's such a great pairing and the actors are so great. If because there's so, when I start when I watch it a couple times in a row, I start thinking it's like I don't know. I'm not clear on what I was supposed to think at this moment. Jesse, do you think it's like sweet, like as in sweet, or sweet as in like that's totally sweet? I think it's the the, the first one. Okay, the, the, that kind of sweet. Like oh, that's sweet. F- yes. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's sweet. former. All right. It's how about uh-huh. how about how about we move on to the Tarka business? Tarka business, you're my hero. Gonna Tarka save wasn't the day. always such a jerk. Well, he kind of was though because he still kind of was. What I, I I but he can be somebody's to- friend. I didn't totally get this he on the first watch friend. through. On my second watch through, I'm guessing my my understanding is is that it turns out that Tarka was placed in there in that cell with Oros with the intention of rooting out mm. what. Thing Oros was up. Yeah, I wasn't to. clear on like at what point yeah. that w- was. It seems like from the beginning that's why Tarka was set in and, there. And uh, so and they and they and they pulled out fucked up thing. They said to Oros, "It's like here's a new partner because you lost your last one." It's like it turns I, out that dude's head exploded. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- and, and the way you word that, it might be subtle, but to basically put the responsibility on the other person with your words mm. like that to say you lost your roommate. Mm-hmm. I know they didn't mean anything. You get all A's. Hmm. You get all A's. 
because your roommate died. Oh yeah, for like that Zach Morris movie, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so <laughs> I just struck out, struck, struck to me. It's like you lost your roommate. I know they didn't mean anything by it, but it also kind of makes it feel like we didn't kill your fuck. We didn't, we didn't explode his head. You, <laughs> you lost him. So do you think they exploded his head because they wanted to put to take it a step further because they wanted to put Targa in there to root I out? I hadn't his even dodginess? considered that, but why not? Why not? They might, that's perfectly reasonable. We don't know any other reason. Uh, okay, a couple of things. First of all, Tarka is telling us this tale. It's him telling us, I think we're meant to take it for face value, right? So mm. even though he's a, he's a, an unreliable narrator. Yeah, when he was saying over what, those, oh, it's oh, just past the tree line. Part of me was like, is he lying? You but, know? but, but, but lying. we're seeing, lying. we're seeing the foot, the, the video footage. <laughs> we're seeing the video footage of what happened. So presumably this is basically what happened. We're getting the, the true story here. Right. Um, what, what do you feel about this? Does this su- su- significantly change your feeling about Tarka and his motivations. If this is the whole story, we, we don't even know if this is the entire story. I mean, yet. there could be another yeah, shoe to drop. It's still, I mean, there could be another shoe to drop, but I think, I don't think he's lying at this point because he said it from the very beginning. He said it was for this guy. Uh, it doesn't seem like, he's and like at right. this point, at this point, that story hasn't changed. He's still, it's still, he's still following the same story. He's done right. nothing to disprove yeah. it. Now, maybe they'll just do a totally fuck twist and like, It'll mess with us, but, twist. but trademark. There, there hasn't been any indication, you know, sort of some kind of sh- uh, M Night Shyamalan uh, twist. Right. I, I'm not exactly sure what to make of this again, uh, because we're seeing what's happening. It's a very touching story. the The actor who played Oros was um, I don't have his name handy. Uh, wonderful job. It's uh, like Oser Chow. These yes, I think that that's it. the The set direction was great. The transitioning between the the current time and the flashback was really good. Is it Osric Chow? It looked cool. It sounded yeah. cool. Wikipedia says it's Osric Chow portrays Targa's missing friend and partner Oros. And all of that, I liked it. But at the end of it, uh, it doesn't seem to change. I, I, am I supposed to think? Oh, okay. Now I get where he's coming from because I kind of don't. And I, I might be one of those, the, the good of the many is outweighs the good of the one kind of people, but, or the good but of the and, few. And even like the, um, the whole thing about another dimension, like we know, we know that there's like a mirror universe and that there's a possibility that there could be this other stuff, but this, this other guy is, is basing it all on some kind of mythology or something. It, that's so, another so what are fact. We, that's what, other, how are we to believe? Yeah. What's that, that? You know, like. And he said he has proof of it with his calculations. I mean, this is like a Kayalise or whatever. Yeah. It's obviously. Some it's, kind of it's like the string theory where there's the math, but but there's no way to prove it. Yeah, and there's and <laughs> that's right, no way can't prove that it's a shit. Good analogy, but um, but in the way it's presented, it's obviously some kind of like analogy for releasing, uh, getting to Stovall core or some shit, right? Stovall core, stu- stuffing stuffy core. Stevador. It does sort of seem uh, like an afterlife sort of situation. Okay, there, there's a lot to unpack here because first of all, we take it all take stuffing. it all for face value. I, so, I still don't understand why 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 uh, Tarka why can't he just say you know what uh, I've been waiting a long time I'll give it a month let's sort out this DMA business first. Uh, he's already pow- been waiting years. I don't know why everything. Is, I guess he's just worried that somebody he doesn't want anyone to get to like sneak up and be like oh no you didn't and then take it. From I think him. another confusing aspect is is where there there is a a mild implication. It's not a strong implication, mind you, mind you. It's not a strong implication. It's merely a mild implication. But it's not a, an explication. But there's a mild implication in this episode. A mild implication. That, uh, because Tarka refers to escaping from the compound, hiding in the caves and bushes and stuff, and then there being a huge power overload at the compound, mm. at, after which he saw a number of ships leave, and so when he went back, it was abandoned. So one interpretation and possibly the interpretation Tarka has taken is that uh, Oros found a way to tap into all that power Mm -hmm. and activate his transported device. Mm -hmm. And it wrecked wrecked the colony. So in other words, Tarka is hoping that that is the case because that's sort of the, 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 the most direct way for him to be happy that his friend very, very soon after he escaped, after Tarka escaped, his friend Oros was able to also escape through to another dimension. Now, if that is the case, there, there's a bit of a disconnect between that and 
Tarka saying he needs this otherworldly mega device in order to power his transporter to that dimension. Uh, because it didn't seem like Oros needed it. He was able to get away with like a warp core. Whatever they had at the, at the ship. And was, that compound, yeah. which was a rural planet compound. They had um, just some whiny machinery. Right? So that's that's a disconnect that jumped out at me. Now, you could easily explain it away as saying, well, Tark is not as skilled as Oros, so his machine is not as efficient, and Tark so it needs, more, it needs more energy. But they, ha- they, they kind of haven't. It's just Tarka keeps saying, like, I need that energy. Right. What was he going to do if the, the DMA never appeared? We know he was already yeah. working for Starfleet yeah. on on al- on alternatives for a long time prior to the DMA existing. He got involved when the DMA came around because he concluded that it must be powered by some tremendous source of power. But uh, that's a disconnect that I'm having a little bit of trouble reconciling. So when they got caught because... Again, and what was speaking of implication? What was <clears throat> the implication as to why they got caught? Was it because there wasn't? Uh, they said there wasn't enough power, but was that actually the case, or or did they just shut it? The guards shut it down. That's unclear. And so, right, and that's unclear. And so, yeah, where did he get the power from? I guess uh, if if he did eventually zip away, like you think he did. So I don't know. And Back to the Future too. You 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 can't you can't use hoverboards over water unless you've got power. You got you got to have power. You have to have power. You it's gotta, like that extra hoverboard you like plug into. What a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Tarka's motivations, what you're saying about you're not sure what his motivation is. Unless there's something that drastically changes in the past couple episodes, like we just kind of discussed, the problem, well, I don't want to call it a problem, but the issue I guess I might have is that if everything Tarka is saying is true, then we pretty much know his motivation from the start, and there's no sense of, like, gaining sympathy for this guy. Yeah. It's pretty much yeah. as, uh, much, yeah, as yeah. much sympathy as we were going to get from when he first told Book his mission. Like, that sympathy could have only gotten worse. Like, gotten less. We could only become less sympathetic if he became more of an asshole. But as it was, if he was totally honest with Book, which it seems like he has been thus far, yeah. there's no sympathy to be gained. It's not like, oh, right. now we... Because we already yeah. knew. It's like, oh, you're, well, good, you weren't lying. That doesn't make... This me- sort of... G- it gives us the details. It maybe seems like this is only, like, him... He's like explaining himself to book. So maybe this is going to. It's made more personal because we're it's witnessing gonna, it's it. It's going to. Yeah. But yeah, I, there's two, a few layers here. First layer is, is this pretty much the truth of this, the matter? And I buy into that. I believe it. hundred sure. percent. I believe it. Second layer is, does that in any way justify his actions? Pfft, no, it doesn't mm. seem to be right. Because he, no. he just wants to get to this magical yeah. land he heard about. And then the third layer is, what the fuck is up with this magical land? Yeah, yeah. and as we've discussed, it's uh, is it an a- is it a metaphor for the afterlife? Is it some sort of a- actual afterlife? Is is the way that uh, it turns out that the, that the way Oros got to uh, uh, what was it called, Dan? The name of the place? Kyalise. Does Oros just Elysian. shoot himself in the head or something, and that's how he gets there? Because it, yeah, it right, is the afterlife. Right. It turns out I was like, oh yeah, you don't need a transporter. Right. You just fucking blow your brains out, and that's that's how you get there. That whole weird idea with uh, they did this. I I live. I I die. I live again. They did this this whole this whole uh, shtick with um event the movie Event Horizon. Yeah, this idea. I love that movie. It is fun movie. I was I I remember fucked up movie. I was watching it like late at night about like like seven years. A lot of Latin in that movie. Seven years ago, and I was surprised. I hadn't seen it in decades. I was like kind of creeped out. Oh, that (laughs) movie is one of the few movies that has successfully creeped me out. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a big tough guy. I do get creeped out by by uh, uh, Jason Isaac scooping his eyeballs out and talking in Latin. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> it's a bunch of other horror and Sam Neill. I'll watch. Oh, is, but is Jason watch, Isaac is in that movie? He is in that movie. Uh, I will watch any not Oscar movie Isaac with no Jason Isaac. with Sam Neill in it. I will watch most movies Merlin. with Jason, Sam Neill. Jason Isaac. Sam Neill. Is so cool. wait, the point the point I was basically saying though was this idea that. You know, there is a heaven and hell exist, and there is such a thing. It's or at just least heaven. Maybe it's, maybe hell is the contemporaneous world. Right, but maybe yeah. heaven is is maybe some, it's just hell. Maybe heaven is a place we go where we die. Maybe he- heaven is a place on earth. Maybe <laughs> I know it's a song, but like this whole idea. <laughs> pretty decent. Too. People always talk about like you know the afterlife. You die. You go to this secret place where everything's wonderful, and then someone comes along and posits like, well, what if that secret place is just in a different dimension? You know, and that whole whole thing, which is fine. Sure, why not? Mount Olympus. Uh, I and here again, I can appreciate the strength 
of the motivation, the, 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 how much pull believing in a dimension of pure peace and happiness and boring. <laughs> well, the idea I that, know, right? The idea that exists. Come on. The idea that let's, let's, let's grant, let's grant for the purpose of uh, discussion and argument. Uh, let's grant that such a dimension does indeed exist, that Oros is entirely correct. And let's grant further that there are no monkey paws gimmicks related to the dimension. <laughs> Wish I had a monkey's paw. Where, where it's like you go there and everything's really peaceful, but there's some like weird twist of, that makes your life yeah, there's like, sort like of the, miserable. The Everybody ra- has like an upside down face. The or rain something. that turns you inside out. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, like man. That. That's right. Uh, oh, no. That's horrible. Let's, let's, let's posit that all that is indeed let's do it. the case. Let's I do understand someone's motivation for wanting to get there, and I understand how that motivation could be compounded if they believe and hope that a loved one of theirs is also there. I understand all of this. It it, it is sympathetic in the in the in the humanistic context that we can all sort of understand that pull. Um, in the Star Trek context, is confusing because it's not. I'm like I'm like, am I supposed to be sympathetic to this guy because what he's doing is the fucked up. Yeah. He's, but he's risking billions of lives potentially. Oh man! Fucking around, yeah. trying to get to heaven. But if he's that's, still is that if that's if that's what he's trying to do. That's 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 fucked up. But he's still it's tell- selfish. But he's still telling Book that they're doing that he's in it to save lives. But he was already established his motivation. So why is he? At he, what point he, did- he's what he's established is that he's perfectly fine if a side effect of what he's yeah, doing saves right. lives. His first attempt didn't work. He has not been sufficiently chagrined, mm. which blood how much sympathy you can have for him and uh yeah so uh (laughs) as as sympathetic as i am for his his situation and how impressed i was with the characterization of oros and the telling of the tale in in as rapid a fashion as they are forced to do since it's squeezed into this one one episode as a as a b plot or a plot whichever plot you want to say it is uh impressed with all of that um uh i still don't feel that bad for the guy it was good TV, yeah, I, but you know he's still kind of obnoxious, which is just part of his charm, I guess. Um, and right, I don't. Yeah, that's, that's that is true. Like I don't feel bad for him at all. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, he's like I can understand. I can. Maybe we're just terrible people. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, guess I do feel bad for him, but I. I, I mean, I no, can. I can no. understand that he feels these strong emotions, but it's like, and so I. He seems we're, relatable we're, in that sense, but he's taking it like beyond a, re- a, we're, like we're a reasonable the, uh, amount. We're of on the side ever. of. Starfleet and shit, and the Federation. He's he's gone rogue. Yeah, so. but 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 the book is right there but, with him. But the, yeah, but the but, so but, book's gone rogue. But but the, but not totally rogue in the sense that he does have something relatable. Oh about yeah, him. right. No, there there's there there's still but are, it doesn't mean are rifts it, between so, Tarka and, and so he can seem relatable but not sympathetic at all, really. And I don't right. know if that's what, but I don't know if that's what they were or, going for. I don't, or sympathetic and not relatable. Meh. Yeah, I don't, do you think they were going for either of those? It's a great. Well, it seems like they would. I, I, who knows what they are going for? As we've discussed earlier this season, as we've discussed in previous seasons of Discovery, for all the strengths you get from the serialized uh, storytelling and the season long arcs, there's a lot of great stuff that comes out of that. One of the things that is can be problematic is when they set their stories up with these little mystery structures where. We learn information over time. We don't know until the absolute and final episode of the season how it necessarily all uh, either fits together or or how the uh, writers have intended for it to to sit together. So so it's it, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to comment on all this stuff because a, we don't know a hundred percent where they're planning on going. It's with a weird it. thing with like mystery stories because. Do you want to be able to figure it out? Should you be able to figure it out? Is that the story, the, the the sign of a good mystery story? Is that you're I mean, able ideally, to? That in you're able to? You're, you're able to, like, oh shit, I should have known that. Yeah, but like, I like uh, ten little ten little Indians. That's yeah. a good one. But, but that's not like or, that's not the original name of that book. Oh no, that's right. That's right. Um, but that's exactly right. The but and then there were none. But nope. <laughs> is that not the original either? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's a different story. Um, I have enjoyed this season, and it and it's not that I haven't enjoyed it, but looking at it, it's really just this season has just been a string of failures, basically, right? Like they keep trying to do something. They're having a hard it time. It gets fucked up. Yeah. They keep trying to they chase them into this place and that they get fucked up and they jump the DMA away. Is a big and they challenge. try to stop the DMA and they fuck them up. They keep like trying to make things happen and things just kind of fuck up. So like 
are is anyone learning anything along the way or is this just kind of like a fun ride to get on or we is what... have we have a bit of an analogy because what is being what is being gained throughout each episode on its own you know we have an analogy within the star trek corpus as it happens corpus because season three of enterprise was essentially set up as a season-long arc now they had more episodes uh more episodes more filler episodes and uh each episode despite being part of a season-long arc was somewhat more independent of the other episodes however basically season-long arc about uh stopping a threat to earth so not too much different than what we're dealing with with the dma However, in that case, there were a number of, as you say, Dan, there were some successes and some failures along the way throughout the season until the conclusion of the season and some twists and turns and things like that. There is a little less of that here, uh, whether that's a just a choice because they wanted to tell the story differently or because uh, they have fewer episodes, so there's not as much room to dilly-dally. I don't know. It- but it is a different vibe. It made me think, and to bring up Nth Degree again, because we just happened to watch it recently, the similarity that these Star two- Trek TNGs, the, the Nth Degree. And um, this, this season of Discovery, I don't know because it's not all out yet, but what it seems to be headed is like this idea at the end of the episode, there's like this spoiler alert for Nth Degree. Um, see, I said it before I gave it. That's what you got to do. Some people yeah. say spoiler alert after. That's not good. <laughs> that is not good. Time doesn't work that way. It's almost <laughs> mocking. Yeah, exactly. That's how I do it. That's more um, like a timescape situation or ca- cause and effect. Um, yeah. Um, so at the end of the episode, there's this like <laughs> alien alien species, right? And some kind of crazy powerful creatures that are just fucking with your shit, right? The tendency. And, and then at the end, then the he's gr- talking about the nth degree. Oh, I'm and, sorry. And the, what, he's what talking about the big heads. Yeah, the big head people. Yeah, what were the nth? The, the Latvian Orthodox. So, were they were Cytherian or something like yeah, that? Yes, Cytherian. Cytherian. Anyway, thing or two about the Star Trek. So both of got our, it up in my noodle. Both are all, right, all that Star Trek this, knowledge up in my noodle. Are, are this you got this shit. Both of are this long nangly noodle. <laughs> Sorry. See, I knew that was the fucked up one. That last one was the fucked up one. I apologize. Dan. You just read a, my face. A noodle that. too far. <laughs> so both of the stories are sort of propelled along by this idea that there's some kind of powerful shit fucking fucking doing something weird, and we don't know what that is yet. Now, in the terms of the nth degree, the Cytherian seemed more like like a, a a plot device, right? Mm-hmm. Like like it was a nuisance to the story uh, that the story needed. The story needed a question of why is this happening? And it's mm-hmm. like, well, we got to think of something. Let's just throw these Cytherians in there. Um, that's one interpretation you could take by watching that episode. I just happen to also think it's neat the idea that it's like they're going to the center of the universe. It's absurd. This these aliens live in there and they're bringing you in. It was and the clouds were milky white. Yeah, milky white, milky white, uh, and it was stellar. stellar that's clouds. how you got the milky white. And so and so it was so ridiculous. But I really dug it. There was something like yeah. far out about it. But then you could. That's also a reason you could say, well, maybe it was just kind of a weird thing they threw into make the shit going on <laughs> to make the shit, <laughs> make the shit going on, the shit going on. <laughs> but this this is, shit. but in the meantime they it was a means to tell the story about barkley right this is a story about yeah. barkley and it was about, smart barkley. And, and it was smart barkley smart barkley smart barkley um everybody so, had matching towels <laughs> <laughs> so it was really just we're just talking about you know what would happen to this character barkley and let's explore that for a while Whereas this, I'm not sure what the focus is. Is the focus the journey or the destination? You know, I don't know. Is it you could a say character that, based? Is it plot based? Yeah, you could say you probably would assume it's a, the jur- a journey kind of situation because you know it's all based around what the fuck is this thing? You know, uh, uh, where and they are revealing form- a little. They yeah. are revealing a little bit more about them. With each in episode. a serialized format, we're always in the middle of the story until it has concluded. And that's, that's true. Where we can get a better idea of what's. Uh, going on i would argue it's that like, you can do it in different ways and even in the same show there can be certain threads that are a little more coherent and others where it's a little maybe I, i'm not exactly 100 percent sure what i'm supposed to be thinking about this all the dma stuff all the first contact stuff that seems 
totally sensible to me. I don't have any problems with that, mm. that plot line. It, it, that's very traditional Star Trek style. Here's a problem. Uh, here's how we're going to try to solve it. That didn't work. So we're going to try a different way. Okay. We're going to, so it's all about figuring out communication. We're going to make a few uh, points that about confirmation bias that one would hope that uh, 32nd century Starfleet officers would not have to have explained to them. Because uh, it's yeah. A, right. Sort of a basic context, yeah. kind of basic concept I, in terms of uh, critical thinking. I but guess for I, the audience, I understand why they did and, that. And I guess you're right. It's not, it wasn't just a string of failures because for example, this episode you could say was sort of half, half a success, yeah, you know, they got through the uh, but, great barrier, but the one where they chased book and Tarka, the ones where they're chasing book and Tarka seem like they're just, they were just failing every time. The, yeah, the previous that. episode was kind of a bunch of, yeah. <laughs> it was good, yeah, but it was again very predictable. This episode yeah. more, it was it was unpredictable. Uh, beyond, they're going to get through the galactic barrier. This is the most serialized the Discovery has been. It's every episode is you know just continuing the story leading to. It feels that conclusion. way at times. Yeah, yeah because it really does. Because there's been even even in the previous season they were sort of more episodic moments. So was the A and B plot gonna? They must join up. I mean, they're they're already intertwined. Oh, but but I mean, I do what I but, do like. But Oros is Oros going to be directly involved in this a plot somehow? Okay, how about this? Well, let's take a quick break. Oh no! Did I do that? <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. You made us take a break. And ah, when we get back for the last much. for the last segment in the show, for we the will, last segment, we will cover uh, who. Who, who who is out there beyond who the galaxy in the big old bubble land? Who is that? Well, who are our guesses? Who is out in and the big we'll old discuss, bubble? We'll discuss, hey, they didn't mention espers or people with ESP and getting uh, getting super brains. But I'm they did, not jokingly. But they did, they did mention getting your frontal lobe fried. And we know that uh, Book's got some ESP power. So uh, we're going to talk about they that. They did not mention it. They did not mention it. So uh, we'll see about that. Okay. So uh, we'll see about that. Huh? We will. Be right back. Okay, we're back. We've calmed down a little bit. Hey! In the intervening time. We, hey! had, we had to take several minutes. Things were getting a little... A little out of control. Heat. We're getting a little agitated. You were talking about... Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this now or later, but there was. Uh, you were talking about online... Now and later, I prefer Starburst. First time I heard uh, now and later, I thought the kid said narrowly. Mamba's like <laughs> he said that last week. Narrowly. Did I say on the podcast though? Yeah, I think so. Oh shit, that's been a, a previous discussion. Well, okay, a few podcasts. You were talking something about on the internet, people found something humorous. Okay, yeah. Like, well, let's mention that in the odds, I bet they odds did. and ends. Remember, yeah. I have a note about that too, mm. so we'll get to odds and ends in a second. But before we get to the odds and ends, I wanted to uh, discuss a couple things. First, in where no man has gone before, which we discussed in episode. Numero uno, Juan. this particular podcast. Not in joking. Where No Man Has Gone Before, uh, Gary Mitchell and Elizabeth Daner, by the way, Sally Kellerman just mm. passed away, sadly. Oh, really? Yeah, Shit. like today or yesterday. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it was sad. But uh, uh, both of Ivan those- Ivan Reitman co- died. Yes, he really? also died recently. Oh, man. So yeah. Bob Saget. Well, that was- yeah, well, yeah. Louis was Anderson yeah. also yep. died recently. Uh, uh, number of people- uh, Anyway, no, regardless, people, regardless of someday that. it's going to be you. That Bob Saget <laughs> should actually kind of bum me it out. It was sad. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, but uh, Gary Mitchell and Elizabeth Danner, they they obtained sort of godlike powers when, when they encountered the galactic uh, barrier, right? In that episode, we were led to believe no they were talking about people who had high levels of ESP. Oh, or propensity. right. I ESP. remember that now. That was some 60s shit. Like, yeah, yeah, it was in their file. It was like when they thought ESP was still a science. Yeah, yeah it was in their in Starfleet the file. The CIA like, was like, well, he was this against the Russians. <laughs> yeah. They got a high ESP yeah. rate. Yeah. Do you ever see that movie, that Men, the, the Men Who, the stare, men who at, stare at Goats? That's fucking, yeah. yeah, that's bizarre. That's a, <laughs> weird, that's that's a real, weird movie. Right? But I, so, so in the Where Man, No Man Has Gone Before, uh, that was one of the criteria was that if you had more ESP potential, you were more likely to get, get the God powers. It's right? like that having metachlorians, basically. Sort of, except it made more sense somehow. <laughs> yeah. uh, it still seems scientific. <laughs> but we don't hear any real mention of that, but but Tarka does make a reference to frying your frontal lobe. Yes, he does. 
I think I'm I'm I thought he was talking about going through the antimatter at the ga- galactic barrier. Well, there, there's the negative matter. There's antimatter, and then there's the negative energy. Negative energy, mm. which they mentioned this episode, and was also mentioned in where. No so Man the has thing that that fucks yeah. up your frontal lobe has nothing to do with the galactic barrier. It has to do with the, the DMA people. No, somehow? it has to do with the galactic barrier in where no man has gone before. Uh, right. The DMA people are outside of the galactic barrier, so you have to pass through it. Now. They have set up this story such that Book and Tarka oh. are behind the Discovery. They have not yet crossed over. Yeah, Discovery. Did, Discovery got in them bubbly bits. They got in the cool the bubbly, bubbly bits, the bubbly which bit. was a fun action set piece. It was All that awesome. Was pretty, pretty, <laughs> it was pretty rad. That's pretty cool. Get yourself some snake leaf. Get yourself some snake heroin, snake cocaine. Snake heroin. <laughs> I expect <laughs> nothing <laughs> less from snake. Discovery. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, get some snake wine and snake wine. <laughs> and, and, and watch those snake, scenes. Oh, that's those snake are great. juice. Those are, yeah, snake, snake juice. juice. Uh, but, um, but Book and Tarka haven't yet crossed. I'm wondering if one of the reasons is is because they're going to play around with this idea of this godlike powers thing. I don't know if they're going to reference it in a tangential way. I hope they reference it somehow. Because we don't know if they got that programmable antimatter. They mentioned they got the well. They did. did, they, get, did they actually they got get it. it. They, they got found it. it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would like to see some fucking weird, far out. Weird I want book tra- to have magic powers. Yeah, exactly. I want to see something that's fucking weird, man. Yeah. That's like, I mean, after all, why not? Just why not just go for it and be they fucking owe weird? Us. They yeah, owe well, us big. They well, owe we did get to see. It. We, got, we, we, we got to see. It. They might not want to repeat it since Commander Ransom went through basically the same thing on mm-hmm. Lower Decks in season two, uh, <laughs> which was a great scene. But it was, yeah. I mean, it was a whole episode focused on that. Um, I'm not saying they got to do it. I'm, I'm, but I would like them to mention it in some way or have some something happen. I don't. I don't know. I don't even have. I anything. don't even know. I'm just tossing it out there. It's like a maybe thing. <laughs> just like a just like a maybe. Know, you know, just just toss like it out. Just like a maybe. <laughs> so noncommittal. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you all have any thoughts about that because otherwise there was there was the other thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the DMA people because you know, kind of each episode we get closer and closer to them. And so it's worth DMA. discussing what, who we think it might be. You think it might be somebody? Well, the producers, if you could believe the producers, and I, in this case, I opt to believe the producers. They they mentioned you would think. they mentioned something about like, oh, it's not it's not going to be anybody who you think it is, right? They're like, mm. it's not going to be like secret Vulcans or something like that. Secret Vulcans. It's the Klingons now. It's no, not the Klingons. I, I don't think it's going to be the Klingons. Or, no, I, I don't think it's going to be the Borg. I don't think it's going to be species 8675309. It's eight, the Jem Hadar. <laughs> <laughs> 8675309. Right. right. What were they called? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Same, whatever. 8675309. That's yeah. Speedy on Voyager. They, they were yeah. the ones who. So we could fight the board. So. Um, <laughs> fight the board. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, I buy into that. But, but. There are theories floating around on the internet. Maybe the galactic barrier is made up of of the founders. Well, see, probably not because they said it's not going to be somebody <laughs> yeah, we already know. know. But 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 it's supposed to be someone we know, but not already know. I think the implication. I, I okay. So I'm reading. I'm talking about reading articles third hand and Reddit posts and all this other stuff. Third My hand. understanding from the producers is it's not an. You read alien, a headline. It's an alien race. It's not some alien race that we've seen before. That doesn't mean it's not. Uh, people from the future, humans from the future, humans from the past. Human it, all over your ass. One person on Reddit suggested that it could be uh, that that's where Oros is living, that instead of a n- new dimension, he just like right. created some little dimensional fold. Uh, I don't know what I think about that. I kind of doubt that. And I mainly doubt it because it seems like it would be a stupid <laughs> I mean, story, too similar to last season, well, quite honestly. So basically, what the idea is that the DMA is just Oros making the DMA. Or like, no, that or that the, the the theory states that Oros is living in the what do they call it? The gravimetric zoom bubble. Oh, you know? oh no, I didn't hear that one. And that yeah, and that's the, ridiculous. The DMA is being said. I don't, I don't buy that. I think Hypersphere. It, I think is made by people. Uh, or some some intelligence. They've already introduced the idea that maybe they don't hyperfield. They don't speak hyperfield. verbally, right? That was the whole thing that Doctor Harai was on about. Is that we Even shouldn't ass- we shouldn't assume that our translators will work because we shouldn't assume that these. Uh, whoever we encounter is going to communicate verbally or even in any way that's why, remotely similar to Why us. would he live in one of those bubbles? Those bubbles aren't permanent anyways. It no, like it's he- not those bubbles. You're, you're conflating two things. The bubbles are the, in the galactic barrier. They yes. live in that giant 
separate thing that's kind of like outside, a Dyson sphere. Yeah. Oh, that outside. thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So that's and, where that's right. where the and, aliens. Live. And so, how did he get there? Or whoever is there? So I thought you were talking about the bubbles and the. How did I get here? And the galactic barrier. I was like, I never heard that. That is fucking ridiculous. But no, if he lived in the Dyson sphere, how did he get there? Is that like how did he power himself to get there? Because maybe it turned. I think the, the how they the do that theory implies, and I'm not. I don't buy into this theory, but the theory is suggesting, or the implication of the theory is that his idea of going to a different dimension may in fact not be that that his it's actually creating like some dimensional bubble or something oh. and he lives in that and then it's it's not uh. it's not quite what he thought it was uh that part i can buy i can buy the idea that wherever oros wanted to go or wherever he ended up may not turn out to be exactly what he thought it would be not necessarily so, that it's bad so, but maybe it's not but does that mean the that, mythological but version. does that mean oros is is a dma person and he's the reason for the dma that's one theory and i so, hope it's not the and case. so okay and so that is actually kind of on the similar level of what i'd heard um from somewhere on reddit yeah. or some person saying something somewhere somewhere maybe, on the world someone said something you, maybe you and i have read the same post we it's might kinda have. Like, it's kind of like when people look out the window and they know they're looking at the same moon one of the issues with that though would be like like what is there something like a cat chasing its tail or something i guess because begging the question it's it's like oros is out there because the reason that tarka found this power source is to go to oros but oros created that it's power it's not begging the question in this case because cuz but oros, oros created left beforehand or oros oros created the the power source and so it's just like the plot created itself in this weird way where, where it's not like it's it actually, not like, actually it actually makes sense well, from a logical sense i mean it, it does but it's it kind does, of it's not it's not it's a time not, loop but, it's, it's not a time loop no no but I'm, but it's it's not it's not like cuz it all would have happened after they had been separated so the what it seems like so far is that the DMA power source is a different thing entirely than to what Oros did. And if they're suddenly the same thing, it's like Oros created the power source that allowed Tarka to go look for him. I don't know. It just seems a little too... too I know It's got a nice, like, uh, nice bow on it or something. Yeah, mm. but, it, but it is not a paradox. It's I didn't say like, it was a paradox. I'm not suggesting that you did. Well, then I'm why did you bring that up? I'm just making it clear. I didn't say time had anything to do with it. I'm no, just right, saying... Right. I'm just saying it kind of oh, it kind of it kind of wrapped itself up and packaged its own little same same you know now live out on a here are some other theories that are out there some, island some theories are thing. that maybe this is related to the whole calypso short trek which I know not everybody has seen I think not everybody in on this podcast has seen the calypso short trek calypso um, but there is some I stuff. I think I've seen it. There's some time business and other Have business that it? goes along with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. Well, everybody has seen it. There Everybody's is. It. Could That's it be related to discoveries, time travel into the future? Yeah. Mm, uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Is it uh, some sort of computer AI people? Is it some totally new species of people that we didn't know before? Uh, I don't know. It could be a number of different things. I'm no closer to any sort of guess or conclusion. Than anybody else out there. Some people feel strongly one way or the other. I do not. There are only more questions. <laughs> Yo, when you were talking about scooping eyes out, that reminded me of, of when they were scooping his, 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 scooping his, his. Oh yeah, that was gross. His, 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 his what is it called? It's a thing. Or, I don't know. Sure. Some kind of sensor bit. You know, the it was, it was harder for Targeted to get it out for than it was for the other guy to get it out. Did you notice that? He didn't groan as much. Oh yeah. Targa had this big gooey black hole. He was hole all, he was all like, and the, and the well, other guy was like, what are you doing? And then like, <laughs> and like he did it to the other guy and the other guy was just like, uh, <laughs> well he did was, he did just get beat up pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. Any other major points about this episode? Otherwise, we can delve straight into any dangly bits. I have a few dangly, which we call odds and ends around these parts. Um, do we want to talk about the the scene where they were where they were going through the through the through the galactic barrier and they were doing their galactic barrier the bubbly bits? It was the cool. I, I mean, I don't know if you have any particular comments. To me, there wasn't much to talk about other than I thought yeah. the, the the special effects were cool. Yeah. It was tense and exciting, and it was just like sort of bridge action. Like they played it up. Up. Even Detmer even said something. There to the, was Detmer action. She said um, something to the effect of, uh, "It's like a traffic jam, you know. Basically, yeah. it's like how traffic yeah, it's works. It's like a log well, jam. And so, and so Detmer's always using anachronisms. Yeah. Like last week, she oh, was yeah. talking about needle, a, in a needle, needle, needle in a haystack, as like my her, grandmother used to say. Yeah. So I thought her grandmother's like younger than us. I'm kind of yeah, isn't that wild? Not even born yet. Not even born yet. Um, 
I thought, and I'm glad. I'm kind of glad they didn't go this route because it would have been a little cheesy, maybe, and tonally strange. When they did the part where they were sitting, for some reason they threw Tony in the, for some reason they threw in that part where they were sitting in that that space cell, right? And they're like, "We're in a traffic jam. It's gonna take forever." And then Stamets was like, "Ooh, maybe if we get in that lane over there, <laughs> we'll zoom ahead." I thought they were gonna do a whole gag where it's like they go to the new <laughs> lane and then the other one starts going fast, <laughs> like in real traffic. I'm kind of <laughs> glad they didn't, but it's like the way you describe it makes me think of applying Benny Hill music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, sex. <laughs> yeah. So I thought they were. I thought. I thought. I didn't. I thought the scene was visually really cool yeah. and stuff. There wasn't really much in the way of tension. No, I thought there was. There was tension, but never tension as in like, oh, something terrible is going to happen. But it was visually intense. It was like a little roller coaster. Like, ride. yeah, I'm not sure why they threw in the part where they switched lanes. I thought they were going to take that further somehow, but it's fine. It didn't matter. It was fun. It was fun. Adding a little flavor to um, the whole business. And, and when they saw the edge of the galaxy along the lines of like these cool things to look at, where it, the edge of the galaxy it looked pretty cool. Um, it did. And um, they're basically when, when Reese was just like talking about how it was pretty damn cool and Saru... Sar- Saru. <laughs> was like frontiers are always cool and it's just like i felt part of that felt like the showrunners were complimenting the abilities of their special effects artists yeah. That's kind of like what it felt like it's like yeah it's like those guys are always doing a good job they are doing a good job i'm not saying they are but it's just funny when you point out how awesome something on your show looked. it was cool but uh, it was somewhat cool. undercut by the fact that i can't imagine that the uh, edge of the galaxy looks anything like that yeah, I don't. <laughs> not that I don't normally care about that in Star Trek. Not even but... through like like a color corrected super camera, uh, like with big bubbly things, and the, the things have different colors depending was... on like their prismatic potential or whatever. They're um fucking um Reese and Christopher. Like I said, they they, they seem like Beavis and Butthead in space in that moment, <laughs> but everywhere else they just seem like normal, like... normal competent Starfleet. Yeah, officers. but that yeah. moment. They just were like, whoa. You know? All of them, yeah. all of them so had their weird. little moment because Detmer and Nilsson, Nilsson's, uh, Nilsson's hair is always a little bit unkempt on the bridge. Oh, yeah. like, it keeps getting blonder. Every, every, yeah. <laughs> every, every time there's like a tense moment. Is it my imagination? Like little, little, keep getting blonder. Her, she's got her hair tied back, but then little, little plops, little plops, sp- boofy. What's the term? Spindles? Pl- oh, fumble, fumble crimp, plops. Is it crimped or is it? I'm like pulling mine out of here. because Feathered? I got teased? So another part I thought of the nth degree again was when they were in. <laughs> this guy likes the nth degree. I do. Star Trek: Smart The Next Generation is the nth degree. It's fun. Season five. What was that? Episode nineteen or something? Some shit. Feels like episode nineteen. Sure. I want to say season five. So when there was 19. the chromatic aberration or whatever mm-hmm. going on, the remember? quantum dilation. Yeah, it reminded me of Data with like the the the, 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 the audio dilation. Quantum dilation Wait, was, was that quantum, it? It was no. It was some a, kind of uh, audio oscillation or qu- it was quantum, a quantum oscillation. oscillation. Quantum, quantum oscillation, oscillation that was causing. The um a beep to happen every twelve point three seconds or something or a delay ah, it was a delay. I see you have a machine that goes bing. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. That's what Doctor. That's what McCoy has in his uh, in his shit. Yeah, that big red <laughs> fucking button. Boop. But um, Boop. so that see that was a little that was like kind of silly when Data said it, and it was like kind of felt a little silly when there was a chromatic aberration on Discovery, but part of me was like, well, you know what? I don't know. I've never looked into that before, so sure, why not? It, it, yeah, like, it somehow sounded more believable. It's simultaneously cool and silly. It's cool, because it looks cool. And it's but, silly. Be- <laughs> but it somehow seemed more believable. Oh, and it, and it might be totally real. Yeah. It's, Who knows? It seemed, yeah, it, it seemed more so, the, the thing with Data and Nth Degree, it seemed more just kind of like, they just threw oh, some... Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 Bobby. Oh, 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 oh. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, move along to odds and ends. Move along home. Um, move along home. I enjoyed the Carbon Creek reference. Did you catch the uh, subtle Carbon Creek reference? No. no. Star Trek Enterprise, Carbon Creek, uh, which we discussed in this podcast, I don't know, in the 90s, episode 90, something. I don't know. Some, some, somewhere back there. Uh, <laughs> Kovic says at one point, when he's trying to make a point, he comments about how the Vulcans uh, observed humans for Almost a century, nearly oh, a that century was, oh, oh. prior to first contact, and that oh. was Carbon Creek. Those Vulcans were, so, they had already been monitoring Earth, and true, they, right. they went there to, I just to had check this, them out. For I some was reason, just thinking about first contact. I was thinking that they had some ship just floating outside yeah, of the exactly. place for 100 years, and yeah. that, doesn't make, yeah. that doesn't make sense. They, they were just, they, 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 they they were had just both. waiting on the outskirts. They had both, because yeah. even yeah. in Carbon Creek, they had actually, the reason they were, part part of the reason they were there was because they, they were already getting interested in these... Uh, these goofy human people, these tricky, that, tricky humans uh, with their baseball and all that. Reminds me of what I wanted to bring up about how Kovic said something about how there was 
something else he had to do that was that was oh, more right. important yes. and then somebody was like how is that more important it's like <laughs> well it's my job to like tell you that make sure that you don't even care about that yeah so, right or whatever he said it's like, like they better cooking. follow up on that shit. <laughs> he's cooking something up some they better follow up on that well i was wondering it's like it's my it's like i'm and gonna da- keep it that and way. david cronenberg like, is excelling in these scenes yeah. in particular. the <laughs> yeah. more the more s- sinister sort of like not sinister but no he's just so deadpan yeah, yeah i was brilliant i was wondering if when we see this plan coming out if bryce is going to be involved because it was yeah. strange that i they, believe he would be yeah because it, it, it was strange that they 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 showed him leaving the ship like that if if he wasn't mm-hmm. having something bigger in the world. There's works. a meta we- reason for that. Oh, okay. The meta reason is that um, uh, uh, Ronnie Rowe Jr., who plays him, uh, has, he's got a big role coming up on a show called The Porter, ah. uh, which is going to take him away. I think they needed ah. to set up a reason uh, right. for him to be away from... <laughs> 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 just, just let me just, that time of night. Good uh, for but- you. Good for but, you. Yeah, but they're just. Uh, I think they need to. They, <laughs> they, need to create, they create, a, create a scenario where Bryce is not going to be a hundred percent of the time on the on the Discovery anymore. So um, uh. that's sort of the meta reason for that. But it also introduces this idea that Kovic is up to something cool and interesting. I'm really excited to see where it goes. Is it going to lead into a Starfleet Academy show? Is it going to lead into the Star Star Trek Section 31 show? With, is uh, Tilly involved? It, yeah. It, what, what is it going to be purely about this season and he does some clever business? I don't know. I don't know. But with David Cronenberg, with that plot line, I'm consistently uh, intrigued and I don't feel like I'm having like, you know, the rug pulled out from under me in some cheaty kind of way well we'll see we'll see you never know it could end up being something totally stupid but so far i'm really engaged in that storyline we got a let's fly in this episode it was a happier yeah. let's it fly was happier and there was one i think in, in the previous episode that was a sad let's fly uh, yeah all right now Here's dan the- getting back to your earlier point about the uh the three-hour tour the three-hour tour. Oh, that was it. the line that people thought. Okay. That was the line. It was so. So when I'm watching, it, the I episode, mean, it threw me off because I remember in the one where they went to Haz Mazzaro's party barge or whatever. Haz Mazzaro's karma barge. Karma, 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 karma barge. Karma barge. They, they, Haz they did the whole, barge. They did the whole reference to the. Um, he's nice. To, yeah, he's fun until he's not. Until he's not, which we have yet to see. We don't know. But um. Uh, <laughs> You're getting there. What do they have, do they have uh, <laughs> calamari on Hosmos? I don't know. What? Oh no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 calamari they, escort. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, is, Dan is suffering frontal lobe problems. Yeah, he's rubbing his frontal galact- loads. I didn't bring lobes. my null space bubble to the galactic barrier or whatever. Yeah. Um, when they did the Emperor's New Clothing reference. Yes. And so that just, it kind of jumped out at me. I was like, oh, they did that, that thing again? Or it was like. But COVID, so COVID's is mystique. It, part of it is this guy wears glasses. Why is he wearing glasses? glasses? Why stupid. is he wearing glasses in the 32nd century? People don't even wear glasses in the 23rd century. Why is this guy wearing glasses? In the future, they don't care if you're bald. Yes. In the future, they don't care if you're bald, but they can also like zap your eyes with LASIK. Future lasik little robots crawl around, little mites well, crawl yeah, around in your well, eyes and constantly right. carve out your just while you're sleeping. Little mite <laughs> robot mites, nanites oh, crawl man. across your eyes and just car ca- constantly just carve your eyeball, your your cornea to re refocus you, your lens so you, you always have excellent. And you feed vision. them like some kind of weird fish gel and they poop extra eye on your eye in case they need to replace some <laughs> yeah, of the they extra poop out, eye. Poop out, <laughs> poop out eye, eye juice. Yeah. Uh, so he's already. A fascinating character. He's fascinating because it's fucking David Cronenberg for some reason, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's wearing glasses. He wears suits that are futuristic, but a little less so than everyone else. He's got the Starfleet badge on. We don't. We have never heard what his actual position is. Is he in Starfleet? Is he in the Federation? Right. He, he's who does he have? jurisdiction over who does he report to if anybody is he section 31 who who knows is he from the 21st century is he from the temporal wars is he what's what's his from the mirror universe he did he gets along with the holograms is he a hologram or not probably not who knows he's the whole package we don't know the deal and there's all that mystique is uh, what are you worried about it's fascinating about it but 
Okay, so he makes this comment about but, you know going on a three-hour okay. tour, right. which then results in a very uh, Data or Spock-like uh, comment from Saru, saying, right. like, oh, it's going to take more than three hours. Yeah. It's like, it's a figure of speech. All right, so for the uninitiated in our audience, a three-hour tour this has caused all this ruckus, which I, I took as just a uh, cute little joke, but when I went to the internet after watching really got, the episode, people got People got all worked up? Not in a bad way. Everyone, most people like the joke. It was just, it was funny because yeah. you all of a sudden start seeing post after post after post on Instagram, Reddit, Twitter. People talking about three hour. It went saying, viral. People saying, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Come on. It was not. It was, it was great. <laughs> it's good writing. It was well, it was well acted. It was not the funniest shit you've no. ever seen. <laughs> no. Uh, other people posting things. I just wanted to say about that three hour tour line. If you're a millennial, did you get it? Come on. That was a, that was multiple posts asked oh, some man. questions similar to that. Don't even uh, bring it some up. Some people were like, I didn't get the three hour tour. <laughs> like, I don't get what that line was. And then other people not refusing to give them the example, saying, like, Haha, well, if you don't get it, you just don't get yeah. it. Google's your friend. Google's All your friend. All sorts of discussion about that, uh, which to me was just. Both awesome because I love when people get to discuss Star Trek. That's it's awesome. It's also hilarious because it's you can't predict what's going to cause no, the most discussion in an episode. You can't because yeah. when you when you brought that up to me about like if I could guess what line what part of it was yeah. st- sticking out, I thought it was going to be like the 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 galactic barrier is pretty damn cool or no, something. I, I, I asked I, you that I, as partly as a test to be like, can you, is it does it jump out at you? Yeah, is it something I, that jumps out? I would have never for some reason the internet's gone crazy with the three hour duel. I would have had to spend a good long time thinking about it because that didn't occur to me up until you just mentioned it, in which case Gilligan's it didn't occur Island. to me. You told me. There was one whole post that was saying like, all right, let's now assign Gilligan's Island characters to the crew of the Discovery. Oh man, this is too far. It's like, who's the skipper? Who? Oh, and then no. somebody was like, is Saru Gilligan? Oh, and man. I think probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. Too far, man. What about yeah. Stamets? Stamets is the professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like how Adira Adira was sass and Stamets. Yeah, they were when they were like they were funny. They were they were going like uh, cutting it a little close. Uh, the The relationship between them is great, and uh, between Adira and Stamets. So I'm I'm glad Adira's back. Uh, so we'll see how that uh, that progresses. It's yeah, been an interesting I'm, episode because people have been leaving and coming back, and Tilly's still gone, and then Bryce is leaving, and so uh, uh, curious to see where all this goes. Uh, uh, there was uh, some consternation about uh, uh, Ad- the Admiral's line about uh, leaving the galaxy. We've never done that before. Whereas Kirk crossed the galactic barrier mm-hmm. a couple times, I think, and Picard and crew and the Enterprise D, the Traveler, sent them spinning out of the galaxy to some other galaxy. So technically they, they as in Starfleet have been out of the galaxy before, but also not within living memory of, uh, of the time period in which discovery takes place. And so uh, you decide the degree to which you want to be upset about that statement. It's kind of funny to, to think about the idea of a sort of uh, a toll booth collector at the edge of the galaxy or like a troll that guards the bridge yeah. or some so that, but it's, it's not put to, it's not created by anything. It's more of a, just a side effect of all the shit around it creates this sort of system that requires this kind of like queue queuing back and forth system. I mean, it's, I'm assuming it's total bullshit, but like, it's kind of fun. It's a fun idea. You know, a fun why idea. not? Why not? You know, it's like, it's like, I love alleyways are cool because alleyways you don't make an alleyway alleyways are made as a side effect of two buildings put together it's, it's like just, how it's the in-between bit it's yeah like a, how and that's it, what this in this whole queuing system got made as a side effect of all this star a shit shadow is like the only two-dimensional yeah thing. dude a shadow is it a is. two-dimensional object it's the it only, only tr- exists from the absence yeah the absence of light right that is the only two-dimensional object right. uh last thing i wanted to mention was don't went, do it don't i told you not to fucking do it I just I wanted to know who who the vice president oh. is. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if the vice president was like a Klingon? Because we haven't seen any Klingons. It's, it's like the only people we haven't seen. It's yeah. a Klingon. And if they follow, they just casually pop in the scene. Maybe it's somebody who's uh, like Worf in uh, what was the Worf in um, um, Insurrection? Didn't he just kind of pop into that movie? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I, it was, I feel that was the movie where they were like, Worf, what are you doing here? And then you don't. He's like, Well, actually, yeah. and then you don't, hear, yeah. you don't hear his response. <laughs> uh, we don't know who the vice president is, but they, the maybe it's uh, vice. Vice President Skrillex to <laughs> President Rillick. <laughs> you mean the, the, the EDM person? No. The EDM group that produces the uh, that, that off-kilter music that uh, 
some of the children listen to? I don't even kids? know. Is Skrillex uh, EDM? I don't even know fucking... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, American DJ. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, whatchamacallit. It's that particular brand. Yeah, I guess particular... DJ DJ would be that kind of stuff. I didn't even really fucking know what Skrillex right. was about. I well, just knew that Skrillex did some shit. Any other odds and ends, or shall we um, close things see, down, so shut s- things down, so tie it, them up in a bag, throw them in the river? In That's fucked up. So Stamets, he didn't do it like Scotty. As Scotty, as we know from the episode with Scotty and Jordy. Scotty would have lied. Scotty, yeah. <laughs> Scott, well, Simply I was gonna, lied. I would have said, Scotty... <laughs> Scotty said you're supposed to underpromise or yeah. I guess lie, which is sort of entailed with that underpromising. It's like, well, Aye, in order for this Aye, to work, I have to make up a line. So Scotty, un- Aye, laddie. so <laughs> Stamets, so, 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 so Scotty <laughs> underpromises. Jordy's whole deal is he just promises. And Stamets seems to overpromise because he said, oh, we'll get there five light years at four light years out and it was totally there were like twice as the distance from the place how did he get that so wrong if it was the, and he's going you to, owe me five light years yeah that was a good line i, I did like, like that yeah but, but he goes it's not an exact science it's like yeah it's it's not an exact science so why don't you be a little bit more conservative next time if you don't fucking know you know why are you getting everyone's hopes up and shit you know you know what i'm saying i know what you're saying you know what i'm saying all right Oh, yeah, Tarka was only in prison, got out of prison 10 years prior. That's not that long ago. Well, he's probably still pretty. Well, you know, it's, it was hard to inter- interpret that. He was he there that for it was about 10 like... years ago, but it was two years. But I wasn't sure if he meant he 10 was, years ago. He, 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 in, in, oh, he was like, I thought he was four or five years in solitary. Well, that was before he even got to that place. Yeah, and then if he was we there, can believe And him. then he got there for two years. And then he I was think, telling that to the guy he was trying to and trick. And I think, I think it would have been 10 years since he left. According to what he told Book. Man, all this fucking math. Jesus, I just want to watch a television Tarka show. had twitchy eyes when he, which was f- weird. You remember he had twitchy eyes? He had some kind of, he kept, he kept squeeze, squinting his eyes. <laughs> squeezing his eyes. Squeezing his eyes when he was reading about the galactic. Like the Duke of. The multiverse variable like or whatever. Like the Duke of Gluster. What happens to the Duke of Gluster and King Lear? And he gets his, the, his eye jelly stomped out by, uh, I forget who. Fixed it. spectrum emissions. Reagan, Reagan's husband. Or Jesse, do you ever get any fixed spectrum emissions at night? About once a month. <laughs> Uh, um, all right. Any more, Dan? When he said, let's get this over with, it reminded me of the other night when it was really cold and I had to like go outside to, and shut all these windows. I didn't, I really didn't want to do it. I was like, fuck that cold. It's like, normally I don't care. But that night I was like, I don't want to deal with this cold. So I was like, I have two choices. Either I can put it off and do it like an hour from now, or I can just do it fucking now. And what so do you I was, mean you had to And so I was like, I was like, you let's. Had wi- this is at your house? Yes. You had windows open in the daytime? At night, it was. And you it had was, windows open in the night, it but was then like, it became too cold. Yeah, it became too the cold. windows originally were open to allow some fresh a, air to come yeah, in. Yeah, and they were in a porch style area that's not um, insulated, so it was All really right. fucking cold. And so I was just like porch oh, style, not a porch, not but a porch, porch, style. porch style, but Gosh, not quite a porch. It. What do you do about allergies and stuff? I I don't I don't do anything about allergies. I if I get stuffed up, I get stuffed up, but I don't get stuffed up that much. <laughs> I'm not bragging or anything. You ask. <laughs> your, your nickname is going to be Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Mister doesn't get allergies but in the middle. Mister Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, Jesse gave me a fuck you look. <laughs> it's because we live in a place where two allergy zones overlap. It's miserable. Well, yeah, I, I don't advertise it, but if you're going to ask me, I'm going to tell you. Like, I'm not allergic to poison ivy either. You want to get on my case about that? Disco Stu doesn't advertise. This guy's so, just leaving his windows but open. Do, don't you ever like? No, don't no you ever? Pollen. I sleep with my windows. Don't you ever fucking say like I, I really don't want to do this thing that's only going to take a couple minutes but i so much don't want to fucking do it okay that's like what happens when i have to pee in the middle of the night yeah you don't want to get out of the nice cozy blankets because well, it's all I cold mean, outside the blankets because i leave my windows open so it's all co- it's all warm under the my blankets pain and all cozy outside but i gotta pee pee my pain is more important than your pain patrick probably true <laughs> okay from an objective standpoint quite probably true mm. i'm willing to accept that on some some scale some measure i'm, I'm willing to accept that yeah. Okay. Was there some point about your allergies and windows? Or he was talking we... about like he was talking about. Let's get this over with. How they're going to run in and do all the shit and get the antimatter. And it just yeah. reminded me of when I had to close the windows that one time. It was like when they had to sneak into the old uh, uh, Emerald Chain camp right. and dodge I mean, I, ships and things. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the anecdote. I learned a little bit more about your lifestyle. Not a hundred percent sure how those two things concepts connect, uh, but I'm fine with that. Good color and flavor, regardless. They, when they shut down the camp, I guess they just kill everyone in the camp. That's why they had to leave. I don't know. I, it's who knows because you might, you you would take your useful prisoners. They were going to take Oros anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, I wanted to say one last thing. So this discovery situation, thing. the discovery situation where um, 
it it was one of those when they went in that they went in that goo blob that that goo blob that looked like it was it looked like um at a, like a scene out of Fantastic Voyage or or Inner Space for all it you did. kids. <laughs> Are you kids out there? <laughs> inner space that you'll recognize that one, but it was like look like that. But then it did that whole thing where it's so fucking big that and it's so big that it looks small again. You know how they do that thing where things get so big they look small. Like when you talk about two like universe universes like bumping against each other, like it just looked like a big membrane. It's just a cell, and then it's so big that it's actually small and it makes up another larger organism. You know what I'm saying? I, I know what you're saying. Okay, that's all I had to say. It was a good one. <laughs> no, it was a good one, legitimately. Uh, all right, so that's uh, that's it for the Galactic Barrier, the Galactic Barrier. This season's about connection. Is that what everything's about now and fucking the world is about connection? Last season was about that, too. The next week, we have a quandary. We'll figure it out between now oh, and God. then. Because next week is season, episode 11 of Discovery and then episode one of season two of Picard. So we're going to figure this out for you in some sensible way. We'll provide you information on both of those television shows because they're both important. We will just do two podcasts. We might just do two podcasts. Quite probably we'll end up doing two podcasts. But regardless, look forward to that next week. In the meantime, you can reach us at feedback at itscotstartrek.com. You can get us on social media at itscotstartrek, whether it's uh, Twitter, Instagram, you got Facebook, you got YouTube. All that good stuff is out there. You can reach out and contact us. Become a follower. Tell all your friends. And all rate and review. You can become a father. I thought that's what you're going to Follower. Um, you can become a father, too. That's out of our hands. Uh, you can write us at feedback at com if you want any advice. Um, we can provide some advice, perhaps. Uh, free I became advice. a father recently. Jesse became a father recently, so he could give you some really good advice. Patrick's been a father. I've been a father for a while, so uh, we can, we, Jesse and I can give you bad advice. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not a father, but I was a son, so that actually makes me more in touch than all of you. Yeah. Can give you some good, Dan can give you some good advice. <laughs> you got us all. Yeah, I've got you all. Just write us feedback at discussstartrek.com. Otherwise, we'll see you. No, we won't see you. You will hear from us mm. <laughs> next week in some form or fashion when we talk way too much Star Trek next week. So, uh, Oh, my God, so much Star Trek. <laughs> probably a bunch of other shit, too. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye. It's nice that they are all so eager for a three-hour tour outside the galaxy. Well, it will take longer than three hours. Figure of speech. <laughs>